All right. Okay. So uh, thanks AJ for the support. And uh, we are uh, now going to another topic. So uh, when we are doing the open API, open banking, so one of the key challenges uh, maybe, okay, how can we leverage that for the customer acquisition? So we have uh, Rala uh, from uh, 101 uh, uh, Digital. So he will be sharing about how to drive digital customer acquisition with open banking. So uh, hello. So how are you? Hi, Patrick. Uh, I'm very pleased to be here. Thank you so much. I'm good. Uh, I can, can you hear, hear your voice loud and clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I can see your screen as well. So it's all good. So uh, I will pass the time to you. Thanks. Thanks, Patrick. And uh, good morning, everybody. And it was uh, great to have uh, AJ um, present the Forge Rock solution and some of the learnings up front, which kind of leads very nicely into uh, the conversation that I would like to have with you and share with you. Uh, obviously, we all know that open banking, since it's uh, debut in 2018 in UK has been steadily uh, growing and being adopted by a number of different countries, uh, including Hong Kong and Australia. And of course, the list of countries is growing. Um, at, at 101 Digital, our vision is really to help banks and fintechs um, empower them to maximize the leverage of open banking and open data to better service their customers. Once again, a theme that was coming through in the last presentation as well. We have been helping banks in different parts of the world uh, with open banking and new banking platforms to maximize the use of open APIs and open data, uh, primarily with the intention of driving customer acquisition and driving better customer experience. So over the next 15, 20 minutes, I would like to share with you some of those experience and experiences and use cases that we have seen in the market. I think it's quite a fitting theme uh, for API days that uh, it's API ecosystem and data interchange, which are really two very important topics for the financial services industry. So let's get started. So little, little bit of background and some of the key challenges that the banks and fintechs like are facing. So this chart is really about if you have a number of different apps on your mobile device or that you use regularly, which ones get the most usage in a day. I put this one up to prove a point that banking is not in vogue. Banking is not something that people go to use every day. And hence you don't see banking, your favorite banking app, even though it might be very good, doesn't appear on this chart. So clearly there is a question for the banks and fintechs to consider when they are putting out their products and services digitally, what is the best way to do this? Second point is that in, um, in most of the banks, established banks, you see uh, their channels, branch, mobile, internet, um, they're largely used for the digital channels are largely used for transaction services, right? Uh, people make payments, people make inquiries, but they are not really used for customer acquisition or new customer onboarding, which is the ch what the chart on the right hand side is showing because still for, for the more established banks, branch and paper seems to be uh, quite a common form of uh, customer onboarding. So really the question that comes with open banking is, how do we actually change this model to allow uh, better customer acquisition through the digital channels? According to research published by um, MIT, and this is not new to any of you, uh, that they, they say that the ecosystem business models where you combine or you integrate different participants um, are the most successful digital business models. So when banks deal with digital channels and digital enablement and digital onboarding, you have to consider the ecosystem business model as an important part of or important ingredient of it. And you know, MIT claims in their examples uh, of you know real estate and property portals and platforms integrating banking services to allow home buyers to uh, apply for loans. Uh, and so on and so forth. And these are all examples of data being used in the ecosystem to drive customer acquisition or leads into origination of lending products. 
So what this what this picture highlights is banks have traditionally invested on omnichannel experiences, creating omnichannel solutions, saying that you know what your this is identical, whereas the most successful digital business models are what you see on the right hand side, ecosystem business models, where if somebody is like likely to apply or likely to be interested in a home loan or a mortgage while they are searching for property and working out how to buy property. So creating that ecosystem experience through APIs and data is a key part of a successful business model. Why is this important? Um, you know, we've talked a lot about open banking and open data, what that's enabled for banks and other organizations to share data. Now, in sharing that data is a key ingredient and having the standard and secure APIs, as we saw in the last presentation, are key ingredients of making those ecosystem experiences possible. So if ecosystem business models are the most successful digital business models, then open banking is a key foundation that has made it possible to make those ecosystem business models. Why is that important? As banks get into open banking, banks need to really consider how they maximize the investment in open banking to get the best outcome. Um, open banking mandates banks to do a certain amount of opening of APIs, as you see in what's happening in Hong Kong and other places, and the banks can purely stop there and say, we have opened up the APIs and that's it. Now it leaves it open from there onwards, third parties, fintechs, aggregators to combine the data from banks to provide value added services to consumers. Now, is that the best that the banks can do? Probably not. So perhaps in the second model, now the banks can, or there's nothing stopping banks can banks from becoming aggregators or, uh, you know, as in the example of HSBC and others that we see, uh, providing the additional layer of services that could create better experiences for consumers. And, you know, opening up those APIs, not just for the bank, but also for other third parties who might use those APIs, all of which in turn are good at engaging customers. So you see the, the three pictures here are three different things that the banks could do. Each, I believe, with a different potential, different level of potential for customer acquisition and customer engagement. So doing, doing the extra level of services isn't really a huge investment but it needs some early strategic thinking on whether you want to be just compliant with the regulation or whether you want to make use of that opportunity to maximize your potential by adding the additional services. So what are the key components of this uh, model? On the far left, you have the banks uh, providing what is mandated by the regulators, the open banking services. So typically this is product information, or open data, account information and payment initiation. So three main categories, so account information includes transactions as well. And then that leave, that paves the way for the aggregation, aggregators or aggregation services or AISPs to uh, pro provide additional APIs like for product comparison, account aggregation, account opening, and so on and so forth. And then finally, there is an application layer that sits on top of it that creates the various experiences. And those APIs can then also be plugged into existing apps in ecosystems to uh, broaden your distribution. So let's look at a few of the use cases where this can happen. So the first one is simple things like product comparisons. So if you are in a place where if you are in an app or a platform where you are buying something, you're you're looking for a loan. Very simple. It's not. It's fairly straightforward and simple to use the open data or the product information to provide product comparisons and insights to your consumer, saying, "Hey, you know, there are a number of options available depending on what you want to borrow, and here are here are the options and here are the potential repayments." Now, this is something that we have done. Uh, quite effectively in the markets that have already enabled open banking and open data. The second one is um, where you have the account information being exposed. I think it's for Hong Kong, it's in uh, version three. Uh, when that happens, uh, a very common example is 
uh, showing all your bank accounts in one place. Uh, now, this could come in lots of different forms. It could be just an aggregated view. Or this could be a cash flow view. This could be a transaction analysis view. But basically, now you're able to present all that data uh, in a meaningful way to the consumers. And, and also, the data flowing through these platforms can be used for a whole range of other services, value-added services that could benefit the consumers and that could benefit the aggregators. Now, putting it all together, you could very easily say to a customer using your app or platform, say, hey, did you know that the account you have uh, is not the best account? Here is a better option that may save you some money, right? Uh, tips and recommendations become quite possible with just the data that is coming through these APIs. So it's the same data. You have product comparisons, you have account information, it allows you to serve up nice, interesting tips and leads that could tempt your customers away from where they are today to a different organization potentially. That could also be an interesting risk. Now, we know that people, whether it's retail end of the market or whether it's the SME end of the market, don't really have a purely banking relationship, right? They have relationships and interactions with other platforms. So for example, a lot of small businesses would have interactions with uh, accounting platforms, cloud account platforms like Xero and QuickBooks. Now, once again, you could have aggregation APIs that pull invoice data from there to show you know, the total money due to them or total money in. So you could kind of see how this open data aggregation can create some interesting uh, insights and experiences for people, the consumers of the apps. So let's try to put it all together. Um, you could start on, on interesting journeys, user journeys and experiences on the app from a place somebody says they want to get a loan and how to, they might be coming in from wanting to buy something uh, upgrade your business, do something, providing insights about what they, where they can get a loan from, uh, giving them comparisons of the products to provide them helpful hints, uh, comparing, uh, comparing products and saying this is better, this is how you can save, and finally bringing you know both banking and accounting into one place. Uh, in this is a case example of an SME app where you get valuable insights to manage their business. So you can see that there, this is just one use case. There are a range of use cases. Uh, and all this can be supported by the APIs that are becoming available in Hong Kong and are available in uh, UK and Australia today, both product, product information and uh, account information. We have built some APIs that actually make it possible with the publicly available product information data to do simple product comparisons that you saw in the examples. We have put all of this together in a SME app, which is called 101 Pay, which we are now working with banks to implement for them. They can white label it, uh, they, can, um, they can extend it. But basic idea is we've taken away a lot of the uh, trouble of you know, having to build the aggregation layer and having to build an app and put some of those use cases that you saw on the previous screens onto a consolidated, uh, consolidated experience on the app. And this is turning out to be something that is very interesting for banks who are focused on supporting uh, SMEs. So once again, the strategy is, if you think about it, you're providing the SMEs a way to aggregate their accounts or view their accounts of different banks in one place. And along the way, you are helping them to understand their total financial position through the open banking and open data. And then perhaps even advising them with tips to say, hey, your current position can be improved by doing something different. And that could actually be a nice way, nice segue to get the customers to move from one bank to another bank, a nice acquisition strategy, as I call it. Similarly, so that was a SME example. Similarly, um, we've done, uh, we do work with uh, the corporate banking part as well. And you see a number of use cases where uh, what we're showing here is a UK bank that is managing their corporate lending on uh, Salesforce and Encino, but want to have uh, 
insights coming from number of data sources, for example, due deal, which is like the company registry saying, you know, who are the, who are the company directors, what are their shareholdings, how have they changed? And similarly from open banking saying, you know, these are the total accounts, total holdings that the company has, um, total company has, and also the fluctuation of how much revenue did you make? How much money in did you have? How much money out did you have? How much tax did you pay? Has the percentage change? All those data turned into events that are served up onto the platform that is managed by relationship managers so that they can have a better view from a risk management perspective. I can, I can go on for days on data related use cases and I get very excited when I start talking about open banking and data, but in the interest of time, I will, I will pause there. Uh, and then uh, finally, to wrap up, say that, you know, at 101 Digital, our motivation is really to help um, the open banking community, open finance community, get the most out of open banking and open data. In order to support that, we launched two products, one called Bank API, which is actually the set of aggregation APIs, which facilitate the use cases that you saw there. Uh, as well as uh, the open banking directory on the right side of the screen, which is a directory of all the open banking service, op open banking and fintech service providers globally. And that's a growing list. So if you are a, if you are a fintech uh, or a bank, uh, you might want to come and register yourself there. It's completely free. Uh, if you are a consumer who is interested in uh, what's going on in the market, the news, and who is providing what APIs, you might want to subscribe to it and um, look at the information there. I will, uh, that brings me to the end of the presentation. Uh, Patrick, uh, I'll hand over back to you. Yep, okay, Thank, uh, thanks uh, Lara to, uh, for your, your sharing. So you, you mentioned quite a bit on the acquisition services. So uh, just to let the audience know, I, 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 I remember that you are, you are actually based in Singapore. Uh, yeah, um, am I correct? Yeah. That is correct, Patrick, yes. Yeah, 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 okay. So uh, I would like to uh, ask some question now, uh, which is more on, on the Hong Kong side. So yesterday we do have some uh, bank side user or bank side open uh, banking directors or managers there. They do have some uh, interesting sharing talking about, okay, talking about the aggregation services. Uh, maybe how should they maybe uh, talk about the, talk about the trust on how, how to uh, ensure the data is proper, uh, properly uh, uh, handled in a proper way. So uh, do you have any uh, quick experience sharing from, from your experience in Singapore and also when you're working with some maybe European banks. So how yeah. do those, um, how did those um, uh, aggregated service either uh, talk about data, uh, account opening, how, 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 how do you address those kind of things? Sure. So um, the aggregators uh, who are the service providers and typically, typically fintechs um, who provide the next layer, whether they're a bank or a fintech, uh, they, are, they are all governed by the regulation. So, uh, you know, uh, in in UK, the FCA, and in Australia, the ACCC, uh, CMA, right? In uh, in Australia, the ACCC, they all, all service providers go through a very stringent uh, application process where you know you your policies on how you manage the data is declared. Uh, your security standards that you follow to protect your data is uh, uh, validated and scrutinized. Uh, so there's a, there's a whole range of policies and protections uh, in place to ensure that uh, you know the third parties look after their data, look after the customers' data properly, and uh, the and customers you know as uh, AJ also pointed out, customers give consent for sharing their data for some reason, and they also have the complete uh, flexibility to turn on or off that consent. Uh, as they as they wish, but uh, you know the answer is that uh, the service providers are service providers are governed and uh, certified um, for the services that they provide. Mm, okay, so you also mentioned uh, both the consumer side and also the SME side. So uh, from your experience in uh, maybe different region, etc. So uh, what do you see about the, the potential talking about the, the open banking in consumer market, uh, retail market and uh, compare with the SME? So do you have any uh, quick tips and experience uh, from your previous experience? Yeah, uh, the, the thing is, I, I, think the, I think there are opportunities on both sides. Um, consumer um, consumer market as well as uh, the SME market. 
uh, we we were we set up a banking as a service platform in uh, Africa a few years ago uh, for one of the large banks there, and uh, and the and this is even before UK actually had um, you know declared open banking as a standard, but interestingly enough. Um, we we couldn't as a bank we couldn't think of like a lot of use cases. But once the once the APIs were opened and banking as a service services are provided to the intermediaries, they came up with so many different use cases, both addressing uh, you know corporate, uh, retail, SME. So the idea is that I think you got to be forward looking because if you are inside the bank, it's very hard for you to see all the use cases. You ask the people outside the bank; uh, they each one has so many different use cases. So the way what I, what I have seen this has been really successful is the bank decides as a strategic decision to open up APIs and data, and they canvas ideas from the external market to say, hey, what are the things that we can do with it, right? With some principles on how we how we want to monetize because like the the problem statement that we were trying to tackle with the African example was. Uh, there is a very low or zero custom acquisition on digital channels. How do you turn that from zero to 5%? Yeah. Mm. And, and we were effectively able to do that by just opening up a few APIs and not even a huge amount of APIs. So the investment was relatively low, but the approach was to say, we want to do that. And that is a hard decision for banks because of of the security concerns, standards, all of that, yep. but open banking is making it easier. But once they do that, you cannot expect the ideas to come from inside the organizations. You got to canvas the ideas from outside. But I have seen in my experience use cases from all segments. Yeah, so yeah, I think you all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it do also align to our observation. So uh, we do also have some experience in non banking. So we generally talk about so expected and unexpected. So if, I think this is aligned to what you say. So we don't know the use case. And then once you do that, you, you have a lot of potential use cases. But when it comes to the regulated uh, industry like banking, uh, financial service, uh, the unexpected is actually uh, uh having some causing some concerns because um it, the, the, the implication is huge so yeah i think your 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 experience africa is also uh, an interesting uh they, story they, they, that you can share more later yeah yeah they, they do and also i think uh, in successful cases we have seen some banks set up uh, things like uh, committees or bodies inside the bank to kind of canvas and prioritize and work with work mm. with this fintech uh, so they have like a collective body saying, you know, this is an interesting opportunity. We should work on it. Mm. And now, nowadays, of course, that is more commonplace, right? So that is one good way of uh, harvesting the ideas. Yeah, it's just like uh, another API product startup inside. So keep keep yeah, doing yeah, the exactly. iteration. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so so uh, I think time is uh, it's almost time. So thanks again for uh, Lara's uh, support, and then uh, hopefully we, we will see you again uh, in our next event. So your experience is really, really interesting to our community. So thanks again for your support. Thank thank you very much for having me, Patrick, and thanks to the audience. Okay. Uh, if you have any questions, please do reach out to me, and um, yeah, enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thanks.